go ahead and call the uh, the meeting to order. It's um, by my computer time. I've got 9.03. Um, we need to approve the minutes from the previous meeting. I assume that everyone's had a chance to review those and go over what was sent to us by Kathy. Is that true or not? There's somebody who need the time to read them. Fred. I read them. I've read them as well. Yep. So I might suggest one um, uh, correction and then one question. Um, the correction would be under old business uh, B1, the last sentence. We might want to spell out CO being COVID yeah. rather than CO like Colorado. Mm -hmm. and, uh, Good correction. Okay. That's the one I caught too, Karen. Okay. All right, I'll fix that. And then I think the time we ended was earlier. I think it was 1028, but that's because I just make note when I'm when we're finishing wrapping things up. And I think we kind of hung out and talked afterward and maybe that's why the 1053 came in. So that was the question I had yeah. about the time. So I, I don't think it really matters. <laughs> so. just, just a question. Yeah, I, 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 I honestly uh, can't remember in that sense, but you, you are very, um, <laughs> accurate on this stuff I, I i actually if there's a mistake i know karen's gonna catch it so. <laughs> I, I think the discussion about canceling the board meeting and moving the lunch um is what extended the meeting yeah so i i think it was actually closer to 11 okay. i think it was too because i yeah. left earlier than that yes mm -hmm. i think that i think that we can get a little nitpicky on things that are, that's slowing us down there's just too much too much going on you know where it's not important to even worry about it as far as exact times and everything I get you. yeah we know we adjourn <coughs> yeah yeah i move we accept the minutes as they're written as corrected that's corrected. Okay, I just need a second. I'll second that. Okay, Karen. All right, moving along. The, going to the house managers for. I'm going to see if I can share my screen in case everybody didn't get it printed. That's interesting. It's offering me lots of screens. <laughs> Oh, really? I, I expected right. two and I'm seeing like six. <laughs> wow. Oh, <laughs> uh, well, that's kind of uh, options there. Let's see. What what can you see? I can see a pretty oh, jogger with, with a jog ocean. Top. Yeah, pretty jogger. Yeah. All right. Is there somebody who wasn't able to view on oh, the there he is? All okay. right. That works. That's it, Kathy. All right. I'm gonna page down to the manager's report. Um, the other, the other comment I had on the minutes is um, like we decided I attached um, the manager's report from the last meeting. So that's what that is. Okay. Um, so we can refer to it instead of putting everything in the minutes. Right. Thank you. That's so here's the manager's report for this month. All right. And, um, <laughs> and I'm looking at last month and going, well, that's wrong. <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking at the paper. Um, the screen's a little, little too bright for me today. So far, I'm kind of with Karen. It's a little early. Um, this is for November and December. Um, both months we had um, 13 and then 14 events. Um, November we had three city events. December one um, clubs we had six and eight. We didn't do any final walkthroughs. Um, wrong time of year. We had one revenue generating event each month and three tours each month. And, um, and of course our Santa open house in December. Um, we did have um, some things going on in the garden, pictures and also um, a memorial um, that somebody did just ad hoc. Um, they let me know they were coming but they just came and set up a little table and did it in the garden. 
Um, couple things on maintenance. Um, they did fix the toilet seat in the bathroom. Thank goodness. Yeah, I well, it's funny because I had Cameron come measure to see if we could get the stove in. And I said, you know, I have this other little thing I want to talk to you about. And we walked into the bathroom and I said, he took one look and went, oh, who did that? <laughs> oh. and I, you know, I, I don't know. They did it while I was on vacation, but could we get it fixed? He said, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. They were back that day. So okay. that's that's fixed. Um, of course, we decorated the house. And um, and I mentioned that Cameron came and measured for the new stove, and I think we've decided we can get it in. So I'm in the process of doing the purchasing work to um, get that ordered this week. Okay. So um, I'm going to call and make him swear one more time that it'll fit. <laughs> right. and, yeah, and I'm going to call the vendor and see if it, if it can come disassembled, which would make life a lot easier. So we're we're in process on that. Um, January is pretty quiet. Um, we do have a paranormal event, which I think is going to get scheduled, but I still don't have the paperwork for it. And every time I don't get the paperwork, he moves the date. So I'm not holding my breath. Yeah. Um, club renewals are progressing. Um, I think we'll be done by um, mid-February. And um, so far, we haven't had any um, clubs cancel. Um, the grant award has to be accepted by city council. So we're in the process. Um, we did a submission to Jeff to get it back on the council calendar. I don't have a date yet for that. Um, and once that gets done, then we can um, get the um, acknowledgement of the grant conditions and the covenant paperwork signed so that they can create the contract. Okay. So that's, and, and I believe based on what Sue Ellen told me, that we do not have to go back to uh, council with the contract because um, we will have already jumped through all the council hoops. Okay. Um, so that's my understanding, although I'm not holding my breath just because every time I think we've jumped through that hoop, it presents itself again. Well, um, and I do have a preliminary scope and budget from um, History Colorado and I'm sitting on that waiting for the council approval. Um, so that's where we're at on the grant stuff. Um, we did have one cancellation. <clears throat> My June 11th wedding canceled because of COVID concerns. Um, but because we don't have any um, restrictions at this point that indicate to us that we can't do that event, I think we'll be able to do it. I did not refund their, their deposit. I did tell them I would honor it if they set another date okay. so um and i got the impression that covid was their excuse but there was other stuff going on oh. and um that's they wouldn't tell me what they just said they were having a hard time um, we did book another um we booked a retreat in november we booked a wedding in july and we booked uh, another wedding in June. So we do have um, two weddings and to re replace the one that we that canceled. Uh, I, the Santa open house I thought was a great success and I, I do wanna talk through that later in the agenda. Um, but my observation was that the reservation process worked really well for us. And I think that we were probably maxed out in terms of our ability to um, the number of people we could serve. And the, the other thing I really noticed is that because people were seeing Santa by themselves, instead of a room full of crowded full of people who were also waiting to see Santa, that um, it felt a lot more personal to them. And they felt like they were getting individual attention instead of you know just being the head of the line. Um, and the first step of the website accessibility audit for the Callahan House pages is complete. Okay. Um, I think there's a lot more steps to follow, but at the moment we've checked that box and it was, uh, was not fun. <laughs> um, there are lots and lots of things you can check for accessibility and it, it's tedious. Um, I feel for the people that have lots more pages than we do because we, we're lucky we only have a few pages. Um, financially in December, you can see we're still ahead. Moving on to the financial report, we're still ahead of the I guess I could move. Yeah, you, the sheets need to go there. Thanks. Sorry, I'm not used to that. 
Yeah, so there we go. So you can see we're still ahead. Um, there's some kind of wonky stuff going on in Munis, but typically um, when they balance the books for, for the month, those things resolve themselves. So I think uh, we're still ahead. I'm not holding my breath, but um, we certainly had our revenue exceed our expenses. And um, it'll be interesting to see by how much when everything comes out in the wash. Uh, on the next page, let me move the screen. We ended up with 183 events with 2,736 guests, um, which I think is pretty good considering that um, not only did we not really open until you know, May-ish, but um, people really didn't book things because of their concerns about COVID. Mm -hmm. So I think we had a, a really good year under the circumstances and I, I'm just hoping that COVID will um, let, let loose its grip and let us have a good year in 2022. Yeah. So when you take a look at the actuals, moving on to the next page, um, there's, there's really nothing interesting, but it does give you detail about who met in the house and who did tours and how much set up and clean up and <clears throat> event hours we had and also the revenue. That, that was November. Mm -hmm. um, November expenses, pretty normal. Nothing uh, major. We did buy a new Christmas tree for the bride's room. <clears throat> Our normal advertising expenses. Um, December was, it felt busy because we cram everything into um, just a little bit of time there in the first 15 or 16 days of the month. We did do um, multiple club holiday events as well as our open house and the um, holiday lunch. And we did have um, several tours and a, a paranormal event um, with kindred spirits. And they had really good attendance again, although we restricted their attendance this time. Um, nothing major in the expenses, just normal stuff. I guess the only thing I'd mention is I did go buy soaker hoses and start watering in December. Um, mm -hmm. Although it was not as successful as I thought it would be. The new soaker hoses are interesting. I wish I had the old ones where they squirt out all over the place wow. because the new soaker hoses are just thin and they've got holes in them. And so they end up watering about six or eight inches and it goes straight down when it's this dry instead of spreading out. So um, I think if we have to go back to that, I'll use the soaker hoses, but I'll probably also use sprinklers because the soaker hoses don't do a very adequate job of spreading the moisture out without moving the hose every 15 or 20 minutes, which is pretty labor intensive. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Well, and it took me, you know, like two days to get one section of the garden watered. And that's, that's, Crazy. that's a lot. That's awful. Yep. Um, here's the Munis numbers. Um, as of the end of the year, um, I, again, I don't think they're final. Um, they're still messing around and there may still be some expenses that need to shift from the first paycheck in January back into December. They always do that after they do this, the second payroll in January. So it'll be interesting to see how it all ends up when they finish messing with it. But okay. this is what it looked like um, as of January 5th. Okay. And then the last page is your new um, board contact sheet. Yes. For 2022. Okay. Any questions? So what month did the private donation come in? November or December? It's a curious question, but it has a purpose. Oh, I'm sorry, what was the question? What month did the private donation come in? Um, there were two private donations. Um, I don't remember. I There was one, one in December, and I don't remember when the other one was. Okay. Interested in the timing, that's all. It was, um, it was further back in the year. Further back in the year, not reported on a prior report. 
Yes, it was reported. There was a there were two donations. There was a thousand dollar donation and a fifty dollar donation. The fifty dollar donation came in in December. That's what I was asking. Just yeah, and the thousand dollar donation was previously in the year and it's been on the reports all year. Yeah, no, that's that's I was looking at just this monthly report since this one is in November, December. Yeah, it was December. Sure, it was November or December. What is the um, current balance of the fund? We, we probably should have a, a, a line added to this report because that question always continues to come up. I mean, we have revenues and we have expenses, but we don't have a current balance. It's about $32,000. I can go get you a number. It's, it's a little wonky at the moment because we borrowed from the fund um, through an appropriation and now we have to put it back, so. I can tell you, let me see if I can get to it. Yeah, my screen is all backed up. So I, I'll get you that number. I should know it right off the top of my head, but I don't. I just looked at it yesterday. Oh, when you're looking at, yeah, when you're looking at lots of numbers, it's hard to remember. And if I go off to look at it now, it'll just feed yeah. you. Yeah, yeah, you don't need to do that. All right, let me see if I can get rid of the screen sharing. Huh. Nope. How do I quit sharing, Aurora? Let's see if this will do it. Nope. I don't know how to stop screen sharing. There it is. I found it. All right. Found Moving right. on. It's oh. Connie. Hi, Connie. So, hey there. Um, Happy that's birthday, exactly. Connie. That's exactly Thank it. You. I was going to take a pause after that. My to computer wish was um, a wonderful not waking birthday. up early this morning. I'm sorry, I overspoke over you, Connie. What was it that you said? Oh, I was just saying my computer would not wake up this morning. <laughs> I had it all uh -oh. this night and I got in here at 15 till and it took me 20 minutes to get on. Oh, <laughs> Whatever. oh my. Crazy. Uh, we, we're that was all, your first birthday we're all saying that it, it was a little yeah. different to first get birthday out birthday. here and hoping to, but. But we did want to wish you a very happy birthday. Let's hope you have a very nice one today. Thank you. We plan to. Good. Good. What are your plans? Oh, we're going um, up to Cheyenne later on today and going for dinner. But we had reserved some things up there uh, before Christmas and they came in. So nice. we're going to have a nice day. It'll be a nice road weather. Trip. Yes, I love road trips. Yeah. yeah. I do too. <laughs> Where do you go to eat in Cheyenne? We're going to a new place, to us anyway. I think it's called the Rib, Rib and Chop House. Oh. Uh, Wyoming Rib and Chop House. Oh, it's on Lincoln good. Way. It's real close to the um, depot. But, oh, they're um, in Montana. Yeah, downstairs. Yeah, so they've, they're had a, in the they've got one in Colorado Springs, and that was it. So we yeah. thought, well, let's try that out. It looks fun. Yeah, oh, good. That it's a great cool. steakhouse. Good. That's what yeah. it looked like. Yeah. Oh, Started yeah. in Livingston, Montana. Oh, you would know that. <laughs> no, I would. <laughs> yes, I would. Well, I'm glad we made a good choice. So moving right along, we're going to go into old business and the Christmas open house. Um, I just as a, a quick added thing, I, I know I wasn't there for the event, um, but from everything that has been discussed, I think it was a huge success in the, in the fact that uh, the scheduling um, we did online and that um, as Kathy stated, it was more intimate um, ability. And I also like the fact that um, we had more control over the numbers and we didn't have people walk away um, angry or upset um, in, in 
like they could have in the past without us even being aware of. Um, we had a little more control over that. Um, so I'll open that to discussion on, on um, what everybody else's views were and what you thought of the event. Oh, I'll say it. I thought it was 100% better that way because you just weren't uh, pushing, you know, people weren't just pushing and shoving you. And I like that we started rotating rooms because everybody got to see each of the rooms that they could have seen. And then they went upstairs and it was, uh, I, I, the people that I was talking to, I got them first, I guess, because that was the parlor. They were very happy with everything. I don't know. The person at the end of the line could probably tell you better. <laughs> yeah. But that was Karen. That was at the end of the line. They were happy. Oh yeah, you were. <laughs> yep. Any other comments? The only thing I remember uh, standing out was there were most of the people were newcomers, first time visitors to the house. There right. were a couple of repeats, but most of them were new and they had no idea about the history or anything. So it was really good to have the tours going on downstairs just mm -hmm. for a little five yeah. minutes in each room. and. and yeah. Nice. My daughter said she enjoyed the history. There were actually some things she didn't know, <clears throat> but she also said she was having a really good time telling people that I was her mother after right. they explained everything to her. Right. <laughs> and I was that. I don't need to talk. <laughs> Any other comments or suggestions for improvement? Um, I would suggest we uh, plan on doing it with the reservations all the time. It really made it a lot nicer, I think, for everybody, for both us, you know, for us working there and for the people coming. Okay. I agree. All I've heard is really good comments. Very positive, very positive. And boy, I'll take positive when we can get it, yes? So. Yeah. Any, um, any comments on the number of people? Um, we did get a little behind at the end, but I, th I think in the end, we, we made it up. I think actually the schedule went pretty well. Um, I think the, the getting behind part that you're talking about is the time that happened after um, the break, basically, after there was this, the, the um, break for Santa and that, begin to kind of backlog things more than anticipated, I think so. Um, but that's that's the only getting behind that I was aware of, obviously. And I was at the front door. So. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Santa didn't. Outside. Santa took his first break, but he only took five minutes the second break. So we, we were behind, but we were making it up with the, with the break time. So do we need to make those breaks a little longer so we don't potentially, have people waiting? Potentially, yes. Or make a plan that um, um, we're going to continue to do the rotation of the rooms because that does entertain people that are in the house while they're waiting to go see them. <clears throat> All right. I'll, I'll think about maybe we make them a little bit longer so he, we make sure he gets them. Because um, that the suit is heavy and they get hot and they need to hydrate and get up and move a little bit. Um, I thought Pete did a phenomenal job. Mm -hmm. um, he he customized every everybody he spoke to. He said something different, and there were some things he did repeat. But it wasn't like John who said the same things to everybody all evening long. <laughs> so. I, I thought I thought he did an awesome job. And my granddaughter put her hands on her hips and said, that is not the same Santa. <laughs> <laughs> Oops. Oops. Oh, there you go. Santa makes you too. <laughs> oh. I do Santa think had a makeover. <laughs> <laughs> I do think I do think that overall the event went well. And yes, the continuing with the reservation system is, is definitely a perfect idea going forward. And um, um, to just recap, I did send the email with the, the details, but that's not incorporated um, unless I go over that real quick. So maybe let me just recap our numbers. 
So the email I sent was um, <coughs> December 4th with this update or recap. So the hosts were six board members, two student volunteers and one house manager. The guests were 213 total guests plus two special guests, Mrs. Claus and Carolyn Darville, um, who helped me with um, editing and reviewing for, for grant. Um, 51 reservations were fulfilled. Five reservations were no-shows. Six walk-up groups were accommodated, totaling 19 people. Uh, four walk-up groups could not be accommodated as they were unwilling to wait or come back toward the end of the event. Um, two of those walk-up groups were couples without any children. They just wanted to tour the house, but they would come back um, at the next art walk. Um, I think the only other hiccup that we had was the um, advertisement that was in the Longmont Recreation brochure. And I think maybe thinking forward for next time, we need to know in advance when that publication gets prepared um, because obviously it was prepared um, and, um, and, and printed, and printed, but, but we didn't know about, well, I guess I didn't know about it and, and none of the other board members knew about it. And I was fortunate enough to just ask somebody who'd said, well, it's in the paper or it was in, I saw it um, uh, advertised and uh, it didn't require a reservation. I said, oh, do you happen to have that with you? I'd love to see that. And, and um, so that's what I attached in that email, but it's that, um, it's that, it's that this, yeah. It was in the recreation brochure, which yeah. was printed in July before then, we knew that we were gonna to have to do reservations. Right, right. So, so now knowing, we know. about, knowing about the printing um, in advance would be helpful so that we can make sure that we're on par. With. I'll take care of it. You know, now that we've decided to do reservations, we will absolutely have that information in the recreation brochure when it goes to print next year. Yeah. But and my my Karnak. Is it something that we need to tickle for our calendar for board meeting discussions about the event so that we're timely enough to get that information to you so that you can get that in? No, yeah. I already know about it. I'll take care of it. And well, and in, in truth, even if we at one point we were even talking that we might have to cancel the event so so yep. it, it it is what it is and and unfortunately i agree with you karen that if we if we know about it now we can prove it so i th i think that's that's the the key oh, so um, is there any other discussion in regards to the um, christmas open house that anybody else has <coughs> we'll just move forward on to the grant update I'm well, I think I gave most of the information in the manager's report. Mm -hmm. um, we're, we're just in a waiting game right now. I have communicated with Ann McCleave and with um, the um, grant administrator, um, both to let them know where we're at and, you know, what we're waiting for. So they're just waiting patiently. Is it set to be reviewed by council this month? I, I don't know what date Jeff has put it in for. I haven't heard yet. Do you know, Ben? Yeah. Unfortunately, with the virtual meetings, um, they've cut the agendas back a little bit. So things are moving out a little further because of the virtual meetings that they're doing. But what an exciting thing that we have to wait, isn't it? <laughs> it is. It is. And I don't know if you all are aware of this, but there were 80 applicants applying for 14.3 million in grants and out of that round, the 41 were recipients receiving 7.2 million in grants. So that's really uh, quite something in, in a very um, highly competitive year. So, so just incredibly proud of, of how that turned out. And, Absolutely, Karen and Ken, I thank you, you and Connie and everybody else that have worked on this grant, you guys, are, it, it still gives me chills. I'm so excited about it. And it's so positive. It is pat yourself on the back more than once every time you get a chance. <laughs> because right. it's, it's huge. And I wouldn't want to have to be on the other end of deciding who got those funds or not, because it would be horribly competitive with that many yeah. people. And 
we are so fortunate. And, and when when um, Kathy told us the news in December, it's just got to do a little happy dance. What else did you say? Right. So, yeah. so, all right. Moving on to the brochures, um, the history room by room self-guided tour. So I have a couple of, of things just to um, hopefully clarify. For okay. brochures, we, we kind of are talking about two different ones. Okay. One is the pink brochure, which is used for marketing. And the other is the room by room tour, which is used for our open houses. Yes. Um, so how, how do you want to approach addressing each? Um, well, I'd like to finalize the history brochure so we can go to print. And um, the, the other thing on the, I, I'd like to talk <clears throat> a little bit about the room by room self-guided tour. Okay. <clears throat> well, let's review the history one first and move forward. And then um, where, where are we on the history? Do you feel that that's clear and accurate and no, no re visions need to take place at this point? I think the only outstanding question was the commentary about the car. Right. And the I think we can, right. right, which I think we can adjust so that it, it does leave that um, open rather than definitive one way or the other. Right. Yeah, I, I'd really like to get that one to print because we put it in all of our packets. And yeah. that's what we that's what we hand people when they walk into the house. Right. Yeah. Um, and they just want a little information. Uh -huh. yeah. So it's ready to go with the exception of that. How about if I do a little tweak to make that, um, as, I, as I stated, and, and share that on email with you all? Yes, so, please. Uh, Okay. I think that would be great. And then so we can move forward like like what Kathy was saying. We have that, you know, those preparations made for packets and whatnot. That that'd be great. Thank you, Karen. Yes. And I can get that done today. So I know okay. it today. Okay. Great. Thanks, Karen. Okay. And on to the room by room, the self-guided. What what were any questions or more concerns in regards to those? I would love to hear if anyone had guests who had questions that weren't addressed with the details on the, the room by room tour. It's a little late. I know I'm, that's why I'm wishing we did have a December board meeting because I would have loved to have captured all of that. And I don't know if anyone made it a, a, a point of writing any questions down that were like, oh, that's an interesting one um, or not. How'd that go? I was at the door, obviously. And so I, I I didn't get any of, of those questions. I, I really wish I could help you in that. Unfortunately, I wasn't at the event, so I'm going to have to leave it to the other ladies on if you received any other questions or or things that has been been uh, um, answered by the the room by room tour guide. I didn't get any um, other questions. Um, you know that might have been an awkward time though to be testing that because a lot of the parents, at least in my room, were kind of watching their kids to make sure they didn't get into anything right <laughs> they you know listening to what i was saying but you know and nodding their heads but they also had other distracting them so um but i did not get any other questions that i couldn't answer based on the on the pamphlet um, i had i had the same question over and over and it was from the kids who are sitting in the bride's room on the couch looking up at that door that's <laughs> high off the floor. That's some of those too. Yeah. So <laughs> I from the perspective I, of a young one, that's wonderful. <laughs> well, it is, but then I was to answer that and I presume there were steps there at one time. There were, they're still in the basement. That's the, what I, the house manager used to live in those two rooms. I know because I was in the room, but she didn't use the steps. She had a couch there. I sat on the couch in front of that door. I didn't even know I was sitting in front of a door all those years. But anyway, <laughs> that's what I told them. I said, it used to be two rooms that they would use and there are steps because they just thought that was hilarious. Just to, like a floating door. <laughs> you you, you wouldn't you you would believe how many people jiggle it. It's like I sit on the other side, like when I'm printing stuff oh, and, trying to, sure. you know, and people, people rattle that door trying to figure out what's on the other side instead of walking out the door of the bride's room and looking in the office. They jiggle the door. They do. Yeah. Beware 
dog sign on it or something. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, well, Karen, yeah. I saw your hand up. What, what was yeah. your comment? I did have one uh, comment. People ask, well, where was the fireplace? And mm. of course, it's in the parlor. It used to be in the parlor, and you can see where it used to be. But I don't, I didn't really even look to see until just right now if it was even mentioned in the brochure. And it's really not, I don't think. I don't think it is, but I saw it there when I was little. Right. Yeah, yeah, and there's um, there's actually tile from the fireplace uh -huh. in the in the bookcase in the library. Oh, okay. Oh. Well, okay. Just so you know, <laughs> that's, that's the only comment I have. Little tidbits that might be included. Connie, did so the fireplace was still there, Janet, when you were visiting as a child. Yes. Huh. Yes. That's interesting because from what I'm remembering in old, one old picture and design was that the fireplace was where the mirrored wall is yes, and then yes. the, okay okay and yeah is that in the picture with the um Sweeney's family and theirs they're portrayed by that fireplace and then the callahan's built uh, put a little fountain in front of it is that right that's what I, we have I don't written. remember the fountain. I don't sure. remember that. Uh -huh. I remember seeing the Sweeney family picture. Okay. <clears throat> well, in our um, in the guide right there, I'm just reading that because it says the mirrored wall, uh, this angled corner originally held a tiled fireplace. Mm -hmm. At one time, the Callahans had an electric fountain of cast stone standing before the mirror. Oh. That's the fireplace is mentioned there, but um, yeah, I thought it was part of the the redo when they brought in all the Louis plaster right. and stuff because it, it does have plaster. That wall does have painting and plaster on it, and so uh, yeah, I thought it was I thought it was gone when they did the re redo. The fireplace was gone. Yeah, yeah, it's when they put in the registers and and yeah. redecorated the parlor. Right. That makes sense. So, I do like the tidbit. Um, documents anywhere that might show, you know, when that was done, hidden away somewhere. <laughs> mm -hmm. I said, yeah, right. Uh, well, I, yeah. Looked, I looked, I, I inquired about building permits and, and got all, all of the permits that we have on file, that the city has on file for the house that, that, that's unfortunately not in there. But, um, uh, I, you know, I think this is definitely something that, uh, along with the pictures that we have from from uh, the archives from the museum, um, it's certainly something we can try and and get more detail about so that we can share as much information as we have. Um, but I think I, that I think would it's, be something it would be that, neat to note the that the tile that we do have pieces of the tile and this is what it looked like type of thing if, if you're that interested this is an applicate that that type of information Kathy that was very helpful so um it, is the tile green by yes. chance yes it's green it and like royal blue uh -huh. and I a was... little bit of orange yeah okay where is the tile now you said it's in the library it's in the library inside the bookcase Okay. Oh, it's not yeah. on the wall. It's just stacked there. It was a little no. It was a little uh, note. Oh, the note. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Um, well, so. should we plan then to, um, I guess, have a separate, smaller meeting of, of anyone who's interested in in doing any last revisions to this, um, and then maybe make a plan for the next open house to do the same sort of um, uh, process where there's a board member in each room to continue to um, find to comb this um, and, and be able to, to share this information one more time with maybe a more attentive group um, and, uh, and then make our final revision after the next art block. Uh, yeah, Karen, I think that's a great suggestion. Um, Calendar wise, where would where would uh, where would you suggest at what point that we schedule that meeting for any 
anybody interested. I, I like sooner rather than later because it's, it's when it's fresh on our minds, it makes it easy to, to. I guess I'm gonna put you on the spot. Let's pick a date and let's put it on so we have it in the meeting minutes. So I'm trying to pull up the calendar so that I can see. And of course I got my personal calendar, hang on. Mm -hmm. Oh, it always works. It's, it's well, well, you know. That's part of working at home is you end up with stuff you, uh, you, get a, you get things kind of mucked together. Um, I, I do have, I'm looking at the calendar so we can pick a time to do this. I do have one other comment about the, um, the document and that is um, I think we need to keep um, perspective on how long it should be based on the way we use it. Um, and I, I'm a little, um, I, I think maybe my opinion is that maybe the stuff about um, preservation and restoration either needs to be shortened or maybe a separate document, um, maybe another little handout like the history brochure that we, you know, hand people so they can take it home and contemplate it. Um, I'm not sure that that much information belongs in the room by room tour guide. You can that's that's, that's, my opinion. I agree. Mm -hmm. we can, that's, a, that's a great suggestion. People's attention span is pretty short. And if, you know, if people were interested, then if we had it in a separate, um, maybe, it, maybe another trifold like the history brochure. Yeah, I was thinking that same thing. Yeah, mm -hmm. that we can hand people as they leave. So it's like, it's not mixed up in the history stuff, but it's, um, you know, something we can say, you know, if you're, if you're thinking about um, helping us preserve the house, here's a little information about our efforts in those regards. And, you know, it not like a trifold. Yeah, I'm like thinking a, a separate piece of literature is, is a good choice. Um, it, can, it can describe, yeah, our attempts of preservation and restoration and, and, and our actions that we take. But it also can incorporate um, our uh, QR code for purposes of donation for um, future support. That, that's, that's a great idea, Karen. So, so looking at calendar dates to, and to set up a um, committee to, to work on this project, um, where, where are we at on, on the calendar, ladies? And I agree with Karen, the sooner we get this done, the better and kind of in the slower months, it would be prudent. Um, I could do something next Tuesday. Um, this week is a little busy. I'm looking for a hole. Um, I could do like 11 tomorrow. I could do next Tuesday afternoon. Um, and that I, is the day after a holiday. It is. Um, I think the 18th would be good, at least um, in, in my opinion for me. Do we have to, do we still have to meet by Zoom at, at this for a committee? Um, we only have to meet by Zoom for the board meetings. Okay. So Just we can certainly get together at the house um, okay. on the 18th. Okay. Um, two o'clock, three o'clock, what would work? Where is everybody's schedule? Who, first of all, who would like to be on the committee to work on this? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, we've got the same both, three people. Both same. Karen. Yeah. Karen, Karen, and Connie. <laughs> I would like I to. Red Connie. <laughs> I would like to as well, but um, just I'm going to put it tentative. I'm not going to um, until I know where my COVID test is. I won't attend unless it is negative. So let's go for the 18th. What time works best for you? I think two o'clock would be better. Who's yes. I'd say two. Two? Okay. Two Clock's fine. So I've got Connie, Karen Cruz, Karen Reed, Maureen, and Cassie. Yes, please. All right. I'll send out an invitation. All right. Thank you. Could I ask the, just a side question? What is the city allowing for the number of people like if we can't have our small board meeting in, in the Callahan house. Why can we have other kind of meetings? The decision was only with regards to the board meetings. Ah, okay. So, well. And it's, be, it's because they're being recorded and put out on the web. And 
the, you know, and the city of course wants to set a, a good example based, you know, for, for COVID protocols and behavior. Okay. Okay. So. That makes sense. And ben, do you have an update too? Well, I, I just, I think it relates to the fact that they decided to do council meetings remotely. That's their own choice. It's not a county led mandate, but they decided through their own prudence to do that. And then it just led from there that if council is going to meet remotely, then the boards themselves should also do that. that it's as simple as that. So it's not reflective of necessarily a new order. And, and frankly, I mean, they decided this well before this large surge we've, all, we've seen. So really? uh, that's where it stands. Okay. So pretty straightforward. And, and so the other things haven't actually changed at this point. Okay. All right, um, back to our old business. Um, moving on to new business. Um, so um, we're looking at posting locations for agendas and cancellations. Kathy, I assume you know what? Uh, the primary location is the web mm -hmm. and the um, secondary backup location is the Civic Center, but we need to vote on it. Okay. So um, I'm going to have you repeat that again. So the primary location is the web, the city website, correct? Yes, the primary location is the city website. The backup location is the civic center. Okay. And um, so I will put forth that it, uh, I need a motion that we take a vote on this, please. I'll move it and accept the motion. Okay. Can I get a second? I'll second that. Second. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and take a vote on, as, as stated. All in favor, say, uh, and raise your hands so we can see it on the screen. Okay, seeing um, all of us in favor here, I don't see any opposition. Um, that's, um, well, it's been approved. So um, moving on to the election of the 22 officers. And um, we can go from there. Um, is there any um, buddy that wants to step forth or put forth a candidate for the office? Um, we'll start with um, uh, secretary, I guess. Is that is anybody that would somebody like wants to jump in there and do it? <laughs> <laughs> I'll give it up. <laughs> but I would continue if you need me to. Okay, so c can I have a motion to, to put forth um, uh, who, who they would like to? I, hey, hey, Karen, are you sure you're up for this if you want to do this again? Seems to be the best way for me to contribute, real honestly, because I'm a newbie. Okay, um, so I need an, a nomination, somebody to nominate her, please, and I can't do you it. You can self-nominate. Oh, well, I'll nominate Karen. Self-nominate her. Okay, um, okay. she's been nominated. I <laughs> second it. She's accepted the nomination, so all in favor of keeping Karen Reed as, as uh, secretary of the board, please raise your hands so we can see it and count it uh, on. I don't get to vote, but here I am. <laughs> there she be. She is the uh, Karen is going to continue as the the um, secretary of the, of the meetings. Okay, so moving on to the chair, um, I can I will nominate myself um, for chair again. I am not. I'm still a newbie. I'm still learning about a lot of things because we really have been in this COVID situation. The one thing I can do is I can run a meeting. Um, uh, so I'll put form for myself as, as a chair. If there's any other nomination, I, I would be more than glad to, to hear those as well. So anybody else? I'll get the like nomination for Maureen. Is there anybody else that would like to step forth and, and be the chair? Anyone? <laughs> okay, then. Um, yeah, if, you, if, if you're feeling like your health is going to be all right and you're going to be okay, yeah. then, yeah, then I am. as well. And, and, and this is the one 
way I feel like I can contribute right now. And, and um, that's, so I feel comfortable doing that. So um, all in favor of keeping me as the chair, can I see hands? Okay, there we go. Then we've, we've got our, our election of the 22 officers and we will move on to the house manager pictures, which I'm excited about as well. <laughs> it's, it's little things that just makes my day. Okay, so um, house managers pictures. Erin, you're on. You're on. <laughs> All right. So it's it's a project that's been needed for many years, and I think we should get this done this year so that we do capture the history while we can. Mm -hmm. um, I think it would be helpful to have a few people participate in um, this project. It shouldn't be that, um, I guess, it, it shouldn't be that demanding, um, but it does require a little bit of extra time outside of board meetings. So um, can I see if anyone might be interested in helping with this project it's as simple well, as is the project well i think we'd like to make things a little bit more uniform but definitely complete with respect to the pictures of the house managers um, there on the wall and potentially um, make sure that we have the dates of service captured and identified um, it's um I think, uh, Janet, I think, you, you know, <laughs> I think I need you on this <laughs> because, you, because you have some history here with your life at the house. So um, I think you can volunteer, Janet. <laughs> I'm volunteering to you, Janet, that you are, yeah, going to be part of this. <laughs> but, I'll, uh, I'll volunteer to be on it, too. Okay, so, so we will start a committee in regards to the house manager pictures, and it'll be um, Ann Thompson and Janet Pearson and then Karen Cruz. So, so just a clarification of what this project is. We're basically finding the house pictures of the, um, I mean, house manager pictures, and making them um, similar or, or hanging them in a similar manner um, with yours and, and um, just years of their service, correct? Yeah. Is there a specific wall that that we can state? So a clarification just for the minutes of this meeting and people that are <laughs> where those are hung currently in the house? The wall outside of the meeting room. I'm aware of that, Karen. But again, anybody else that's, that's listening okay. to this, just so so we'll, we're they're outside the 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 meeting room upstairs. Yes. Okay. And people do look at that wall since I they do there. Yes. Okay. Um, somehow we've lost Tom, uh, Anne's picture. I don't know where she went, but um, I, I don't see her. Is she? Is am I the only one that's not viewing her? No, she disconnected. She probably turned her camera off. Okay. Yes. Okay, here you are. And I charge her. So. Okay. So. Um, is there a time that we would like to to um, set up a, a meeting and a um, point to work on the house manager pictures. Um, I'm open to whatever you suggest. <laughs> okay, ladies, yeah. got to look at calendar dates and see what works, works for you. Maybe we can schedule something in February. Is that? Yeah, February would probably be better than January for me. Yes. Okay. Can we look at the, the first week in February, possibly? Um, as long as it's not a Wednesday. So, so ladies, you're the ones that have to be there. So um, you can do, you know, not a Wednesday. So that leaves the first, the second, the fourth. I'm sorry, the first, the third, the, fourth, <coughs> not the second. I, I won't do that to you. <laughs> no clarification, not a Wednesday. So, um, well, how about we choose a time on February 1st? It's Tuesday. Um, do you prefer morning or afternoon, ladies? Afternoon would be good. Okay. Hey, um, I what have a couple you? comments on the first. Can we go for that Friday, the 4th? Okay. How about, how about Thursday? 
Can we do Thursday? Sure. I try, I try to stay off Fridays in case I decide I'm gonna take a day off. And okay. I, have a, I have a doctor's appointment the fourth too. The third sounds good. Doctor's appointments, there you go. Yeah. Um, so you're looking at uh, uh, February 3rd, a Thursday. Um, afternoons work better for, for Janet. What, what works better, for, Karen, are you open to do Thursday? I think a, a one o'clock could work. Could, could one o'clock work? One o'clock is fine. Yeah. Yes. Okay, so it's now scheduled for um, February 3rd, the Thursday at one o'clock at the Callahan House to go over the house manager um, pictures. And thank you for those that have decided to work on that and join that committee. Um, Was so there, we couldn't do a morning? I'm just curious. Is everybody else busy then? Well, if the morning, a late morning would work out like 11 or is that too late? Um, 11 would be fine. I, I just prefer because my afternoons get kind of busy sometimes. I do 11 instead. Does that, that work, work for everybody? That works. Okay, changing the, the, the time to 11 o'clock on right. February 3rd. I'll send an invitation. Thank you. Um, I just like to add a couple things. One is um, <clears throat> Hobby Lobby's done a wonderful job for us on our pictures. Um, I'd like to see us use them if we can. And the other thing um, is we need to either um, frame in such a way that we can continue to add to it or we need to stockpile frames so this doesn't become an issue again mm -hmm. at some point down the road because we can no longer get the frames we were using. I, I, I agree with you, Kathy. It's, it's the conduciveness to, to make it um, seem continuous and, and clean. And I, I, I think that- that's Well, and it might be one frame with multiple pictures as yeah. opposed to multiple frames. Oh. Although okay. we do need to think about how we're gonna hang it because of the plaster walls. Oh um, yeah. I think that's something we'll talk about during that meeting. That's fine. I just want to throw that out there. Okay. All right, I'll put that on the calendar. Thank you very much. Moving on to um, item D, the, scra the scrapbook. And who has the scrapbook and and what are we doing with the scrapbook? Because we've not worked on a scrapbook where <laughs> before. And well, my question is, do we want to appoint a historian? Ah. And put that person in charge of the scrapbook. We used to have one, but then mm -hmm. people kind of lost interest and nobody wanted to do it. So just sorry, my dog just heard something. Uh -uh. Well, I think rather than appoint a historian, I would be more interested in having a, a group of ladies who would help contribute to the upkeep of, um, of this because it yes. is, yes, it's a scrapbook, but it's also a history book for our house. So, okay, K Karen, I agree. And I think appointing a, a historian is it's as lovely of an idea it is, I think people get overwhelmed. And then if they feel it's, it's a burden on one person, that can be overwhelming. And I think um, because we have so many talented people on this board um, that have so many great ideas that um, just one person's doing it, 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 it kind of defeats the purpose in, in, in a lot of ways. So I, I think this, we should have a scrapbook or a historian um, historic committee that looks on this. So if I could get a motion that we could start a committee in regards to that, uh, specifically that it is to deal with the history history and um, scrapbook and the scrapbook combined, if we could have a motion in regards to that. So we have it in the permanent records that this is a set committee as part of this board. Does it need to be a committee or does it need to be just established as a responsibility on the board? It could, it, it can, it could be either or. It, 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 I think it, I like the latter. You like the latter? Okay. Yeah, because it keeps it open so that we, we know that it is a responsibility of all board members to, to help contribute. 
see, this is exactly, this is great, Karen, thank you. Okay, so so who would like to work on the, the scrapbook? And, and do we have a current scrapbook? We do have a scrapbook. We do. We do. The house, uh, it is outdated. And so we do have a lot of information that I gathered from the archives from the museum that we need to incorporate and, and then other information that we would need to include um, in that. So obviously I'm on board for being active in this project as well. <laughs> well I encourage all you ladies to be actively involved in this project. <laughs> you know, the history of the house is really actually an important piece of our role as-, as I would love to be part of of, of looking at it and and, um, and also so are we looking at um, finding additional documents do we I mean when was oh, we have them <laughs> we have when was the last time it was updated question before so my the, time. The, Wait, the, the scrapbook has mostly been um in the past a way to document the events that happen at the house so most if you go look at the scrapbooks as they exist you know a lot of it is pictures of um, board events and stuff like that it really hasn't been intended as a history archive okay um, other than a history of the events that have happened so you know it, what karen's kind of talking about is um, more of a a, a different twist Okay. to 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 what uh, uh, the purpose of it is so maybe it's not going to be called a scrapbook so much anymore more of a, a history book of the house i have a question on partly scrapbook uh, on the existing books yes yeah. um how, i have a question on the existing scrapbooks um for one thing I, where are they and the other thing is how far where did they start what year were the, did somebody start doing this? I mean, so how far back are they? Um, I don't know the answer to that. There's a whole bunch of them underneath the table in the parlor. And then the one that <clears throat> that's more current is actually in my office in a box in the closet. <laughs> uh, I think probably the first step is to look at what we have. Okay. Right. I think it'd be interesting to see where they started doing this then. There's actually um, postcards and stuff from, from the Callahans, from their travels. Nice. That's so cool. Well, and the other, the other thing I would challenge is that if we're going to do this, uh, I think we need to figure out what the purpose of them is and how we're going to use them. Um, because part of the reason they, aren't, they haven't been getting done is they weren't getting used. So... <clears throat> I think, I think we need to clarify what we're trying to accomplish. Well, I think it's in part education for our community and we can have them available for all open house uh, events so that people can be flipping through and looking and, and seeing progress over time and, um, and then understand and appreciate the importance of restor restoration and preservation of, of this historic property. Um, so, it, it, it lines up with what we promised in our grant application that we will promote um, information and education on preservation and restoration. So it, it is in that purpose, is, it, um, it, that is one of the purposes for this. Okay. Well, the, they're gonna need to be more robust because if they get handled by a lot of people, they're not gonna hold up. Right. Yeah, that's I was just gonna say that, it's having a lot of people. Right, we're not talking about we're not talking about a uh, stereotypical scrapbook. Okay. Okay. So, so um, we're talking about using this as an educational document that we can put out at as like as an informational um, table at our events that people can come and look at, and and that means that we might actually. Um, we look at um, revamping some of the old scrapbooks and, and utilizing some of that material. Is that what you're saying? Uh, we're going to incorporate all the material that we have, including what's currently in whatever scrapbook is, is available. Okay. But the format might change and it very well could include digitizing 
um, yeah. this, just as we are, you know, digitizing information and, and attaching it to a QR code so that people can read information that way. Um, this too can be digitized. I think yeah. that's, that's one. Well, and as a screen show, we can show it on a TV or something, which would make it considerably easier to set up I than a that, display yeah. at every event. Because I don't see the normal people that come for the open houses have really time when we're handing them all this information and then here's all of a sudden this scrapbook kind of thing that they can look at. I don't think you're going to get too many people out of those, what, 400 that really are going to take the time. Yeah. Again, it may, it may, be, it may be a whole different um, approach of, of scrapbook. And I think we even need to get away from using the word scrapbook because it's not in line with what I envision us, us doing with our history and, and our information. Okay, so, so let's, yes. right off the bat, let's get away from the, from the use, the word of using a scrapbook. What mm -hmm. would you say an historic document? What, what would be the wording that you would use, Karen? I think Connie has something. I, I want to hear what Connie has to say. I just, thought I've been kind of listening to all this and trying to capture what Karen is envisioning. Seems like it's it's more of a history of the Callahan House book that would be ongoing, like a scrapbook in a way, but going forth. So it's really creating a new document is what I'm looking at, or not document, a new entity, a new book, rather than continuing the old scrapbook style is that what i'm hearing yes okay <laughs> it's kind of um, like all the life the life of the callahan house from beginning uh, which is the the scrapbook idea was great for the time period because that's what people were doing before computers and before a lot of the other kind of communications that's how they were preserving i'm dealing with this with my family materials too and um, that how to take it into the 21st century with the technology and things is very helpful. And I understand about the education piece of that going forward. However, uh, one of the things about the, the historic scrapbooks is that they do have newspaper articles as well as photographs, as well as thank you notes and all kinds of things that are truly a scrapbook kind of thing. Which yes, I still still want to have someone keep that intact. Yes, keep that, keep that that notion intact. So, I guess the idea of having a historian slash librarian or or documentarian or whatever uh, role on the uh, board is a good idea because that gives a point person for some for something like that. Okay. But everybody contributes to it because I know we all helped with the scrapbooks when I was on um, the board before. So, so I, it, I don't know whether that just muddles it or whether it helps separate the two ideas. Right I have a question regarding that. Um, and this goes back to what uh, Connie was saying too. A scrapbook is kind of a nice, I actually like the name because it's, mm -hmm. it'll be current, right? I mean, we have past ones that the past boards have kept. Mm -hmm. And if we started maintaining it or going on, it would be more items in there current, right? Things that are happening while we're the board, you know? Right. And so, right. like you said, paper clippings. And I, I don't know of any other term besides scrapbook that really includes that, you know, and it's bits and pieces. It's not a outright historical document. It's more like little snapshots. Right. Mm -hmm. events. And I like that idea. And I think because we have several historical documents already out on the house that really cover well the beginnings, how it came to be, you know, all that. That's We have really great historical documents on that. And I know, Karen, you've been working on updating some of them. So mm -hmm. I, I'm just going to suggest let's keep the word scrapbook and let's let's keep it as bits and pieces of events, you know, so it's like a snapshots in time of what happened during our tenures on the board. Okay. Um, or can right. we do a scrapbook or slash history album? <laughs> An album. <laughs> this is just my, like this is my photo comment. album. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Sorry. Here's my comment about the historian role. In my experience on this, on this board, 
if somebody doesn't own that, it doesn't get done. That, and I'm not talking about who does it. I'm just talking about somebody has to be the focal point for mm -hmm. collecting the information and putting it in the scrapbook or all it does is gets shoved in a box. I, 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 that's my experience. All right, if we gotta have a point person on that, I'll do it. Okay, if, if, if somebody's willing to, 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 to step forward and put a position on the board as a historian. Um, but I want someone else to take it next year. <laughs> <laughs> on the stipulation that you're not gonna do it next year. Okay, so. I'd also, I'd also volunteer to be historian or I use that. <laughs> I know Karen, you're like, thank you. Um, so can we have a point person you? with that idea that it's a point person leading that, not yeah. the person that's going to be doing it all, right? Yeah. And that's why we had it before, basically. Yep, yeah, that's that's the way it worked. But mm -hmm. if we don't have a point person, it won't happen. That's my experience. Yes. All right, and so I, I need a motion, ladies, and I know you, you, you stepped yourself. I've got one for you. I nominate Connie as our historian. <laughs> All right. Don't worry, Connie. I'm going to be right by your side the whole time anyway. So. And anybody a second, please. <laughs> second? Second. Okay. Karen, Karen Reed seconded. All right. So all in favor as Connie, as our new historian on the board, hands, please. And you can vote for yourself too, Connie. I think that you're a great asset. All, all you guys are, but yeah, this is wonderful. So. All right, um, so that being said, do we want to put a date on the calendar to work on this so it happens? Can I say that I have to leave? Yes. Yes. Bye-bye. Bye, Janet. Bye. Bye, Janet. Bye. Bye. Connie, because you've been added as point person, you get a look at the, your calendar and see what works for you best and, and figure out how this is going to work. Yes. Connie, do you want right. to take a look at what there is before we actually have a meeting? I really need to because I, and I've thought about that for a long time is we're, you know, just taking a look at the scrapbooks again. The last one that I worked on was with Mary McCoy back ah. when I was when we were on the board together so it's been at least 10 years so okay. uh, that kind of thing i just need to see what was done after that point okay. so if anything so and like kathy said that there's a box with a scrapbook but, and stuff why don't you and i make an appointment just for the two okay. of us and we can look at what's there and then, okay. and then we can schedule that after that point when when it works for you and we'll go from okay. it. But we've got we've got something going. So so yeah. you you and, and Kathy can set up a time to add, add up that works for you. And we can move on to um, other business at this okay. point. And Kathy, I might even I might even tag along if I could come even earlier on the 18th. And just an hour earlier and just take a look at things before the other um the other meeting history, um sure meeting you can kill two birds with one stone one thought i have on on that line um that you kathy you might want to talk to as far as going forward and what to preserve and maybe how to do that electronically or what would be maybe to talk to eric at the museum, Eric Mason, and just to just to pick his brain or or any of those guys over there on, mm -hmm. on uh, a good angle of moving forward with it, because there well, he and he and Karen are buddies. So yeah, we've spent lots <laughs> of time together. <laughs> yeah, and Connie, Connie, you too. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Connie, I'm sure I can't. That was in your head, but there you go. Yeah, yeah. I'm sorry, you. I can't do yeah. one o'clock on the 18th. Okay. Okay. Uh, I have a an appointment at noon, and somewhere in there I've got to get some food. So, um, but we right. could we could do after a board meeting. We could well, of course, we're virtual right now. We'll tag um, it on after the committee meeting. I don't. I, I would imagine we'll we'll get our business done, taken care of, and then you you don't have to make a separate trip. Well, and that's what I was thinking too. Is sometime when I'm there that day, um, so I could do it afterwards. Would be fine too. 
Um, I also have a, my dog has his teeth cleaning that morning, but I don't pick him up until five that afternoon. So, so you wanna do three o'clock on the 18th? Or can we get the other stuff done in an hour? I, I would like to set a limit on- Let's say yes. When, we, think, when we're gonna good. end the meeting. I think that's a good yeah. goal. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a good goal. I agree. So three o'clock, okay. Thank you. Okay. Right. Got it. That being done, we'll move on to other business. Is there other uh, business that needs to be discussed at this point? I have two things for other business. One is, can we um, go ahead and get a count of the Scamhorn books? And we need to set a price for them because we're uh, offering those to be sold um, at the open houses and we need to we need to do that so that it's we know how many we have and we know what we're selling them for and that they're available for sale even before our next open house if somebody was interested in purchasing one but um what is what is the count on it uh, kathy i think you said you were going to have jack I, I haven't done it out. yet jacqueline's been out for three weeks so it's on my list of things to do but it's not done yet Maybe while well, I'll tell you what, while, while I'm there, um, and while you and Connie meet after our committee meeting, I can do the count if you can just pull the box out or show me where they are. Are they in the closet? They are okay. in a box. So I can do that. I can get that count done. And then we need to, we need to as a board, decide what, um, what we're going to sell those for. Well, the price has been... Um... $11 for the little one and $13 for the big one. And once, if we're going to change the price, then we also have to go back to the tax folks and figure out what the tax has to be um, on them. So these prices include tax. Mm -hmm. okay. So 11 for the small and 13 for the large. Okay. Okay. Does that cost a print everything? Uh, no. They were donated, so we haven't worried about what it costs to print them. Okay. So uh, they were, I raised them a little bit. Um, I think they were 10 and 12 or something like that at one point. And I decided that was ridiculous and raised them, but we also don't sell very many of them. I've also been selling the DVD for, for 13 too. So, um, and those cost about $5 a piece to produce. That's so how, reasonable. You want you want them to be priced so that they the people will sell them. I mean, the people who are interested are perfectly happy to pay for them. The people who aren't interested, the price doesn't matter. Okay. So we, I think we could raise the price. So just think about that and let's figure it out. Yeah, we can talk about it at the next board meeting. Yeah. Okay. Yep. So we'll put that on um uh, for uh, the agenda for the next board meeting. Um, so. So the count and the price, were there any other items, Karen, that you wanted to, to discuss? Oh, I have one item, but it's just more of a fun share item. It is other business, but it's related because I was at Key West um, uh, with my family recently and we toured the Hellings House Museum. Now, this is really an interesting property. It was built in the same year as the Callahan House. Oh my and, gosh. And it was it was purchased in 1940, just two years after. Oh we, we got ours uh, gifted to us. It was purchased by the Key West Women's Club, established in 1915. Oh. This was an amazing historic piece of property. I loved touring it. I enjoyed it. I'll 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 bring this in so y'all can see this and read this too and, and share the website with you. But um, just a beautiful property and, and a beautiful piece about this property is that they've they've rented the upstairs out to two tenants. They've made it into two separate apartments, and that's income producing. And it keeps it so that the, the main floor can be held for women's clubs and special events, just like what we do as well. The women's club there, they mean business. They do uh, $100,000 donations 
every year annually. So their club is, is amazing. I'm going to really pay attention to how they're, they're working, um, but they fundraise and they do amazing work for their community and they donate $100,000 every year to different um, um, organizations in their community in need. So I just thought that was incredibly special. And I wanted to share that with you. It's just other business, but it's relative because the house is, is the time of it is perfect. It's, and it's, it's beautiful. And it, uh, I wish I could have just taken you all with me on that tour. I was like, oh, this is. I, I would love it's delicious it because I think it's great that we can get ideas and, and share yeah. information from other groups and I, mm -hmm. that's exactly what I like to do I'm, uh, when I'm off traveling I like to look at the historic things as well so that's that's amazing thank you Karen yeah um, I, I have one other thing and I'm just going to mention it um, <clears throat> apparently the city council has decided that the board's should have input into the interview process for new prospective board members. Okay. So um, they're trying to figure out how to make that work. So just an FYI, um, you know, coming up in our next round of um, board appointees, we're, we're gonna have a role. They haven't quite figured out what that looks like, but this mm -hmm. um, will take some time. So I just thought I'd let you know. Th thank you, Kathy, I appreciate that. Connie? I will, I will say that um, the first time I was on the Callahan board, I think that was in 2008, that was the process is there were two people to interview with and one of them was on the Callahan house board and one was the house manager. Actually there were three that, and one was a city council person. And, and that process was really, you know, we just sat and interviewed real quick for 10 minutes or whatever and then went on but I I liked that because you were getting they were getting to know the candidates that were other than yeah so that was great idea. my past experience so I'm sure that they're dealing with the history of that too yeah it it also means that the schedule for the recruitment is going to get moved up probably by a month Okay. So instead of an October deadline, it may be a September deadline, but I don't, I don't know what that looks like yet. Okay. All righty then. Um, so looking at future agenda items, the, uh, the sign for the flower bed. We'll address that probably in April uh, and it's going to be weather dependent. So. Okay. So maybe if we put if we put that on our calendar uh, to be addressing that in April, that'd probably be good timing. Okay. Um, all right. And the past and present board members annual tea. And that tea again, we we marked that down for May first. Mm -hmm. And so if we're going to hold to that date, uh, it's it's fairly simple um, arrangement and and invitation. It, um, so it can be done inside two months. But I would say at the very latest, we should have that on the March um, agenda. We can start to touch base with it on the, on the February agenda. If, I, but, I'd rather do it sooner rather than later because as the grant stuff fires up, my time's gonna get more restrictive. That makes sense. So, so can we put it on February's um, new business? Yeah, That's yeah. a good idea. Yeah. And then, <coughs> We'll move from again. Uh, we'll move from there. Um, is there any other um, items that anybody else feels needs to be um, on future agenda addressed? No. <coughs> you know, with the COVID stuff, I, I just I think we're going to have to start thinking a little bit out of the box and what we're going to do. We I know we've done the. Um, the summer event of, of having the, the um, Sundays and, and all of that. But I, th I think we're gonna have to look at what we're gonna do um, different to come up with some ideas. So maybe ladies, you might wanna brainstorm and try to think out of the box on, on what we could do um, differently. 
because it, it is what it is and we're going to have to look at things differently just like what we do with the Santa where we schedule things and I thought that worked well I think we can come up um, with some way to to look at hosting future events um, at the at the home um, are you looking are you looking at board um, driven events or events that are scheduled and, and are um, board driven yeah. events these are things have been canceled because of COVID and things have have changed because of it so so let's try to think of what we're going to be doing now we've got we've got um you know the our walks and things that we do but there's other things that we can do as a board as well um that we could um so so the um we had we had the um the ice cream social at mm -hmm. one point in the gardens well maybe mm -hmm. we can think of something a little bit tweaked or different um to do during the summer um mm -hmm. as a, as a thing that we open in the house as a, as board to do instead of the ice cream social. Um, can we come up with ideas, Connie? Well, I know some of the past ideas we did was the waffle breakfast when we did our big um, fundraiser, I think it was for the gazebo back a few years ago. That was out in the gardens, but I've often thought, well, I've often thought for years before I was on the board in a while, um, is having is offering teas again um, in the house because and they would be scheduled you know that would be a reservation only kind of event but a fun one. and um, and now that the Thompson Inn or Thompson Bed and Breakfast is gone there's really a need for some kind of a old house tea party. <laughs> kind of thing for people and there's this is such an ideal place to do that kind of thing so those were some things I was thinking about um all along I, I think that's but a I, great suggestion and I also thought about what about what if we had um like wine and music or something in the gardens with mm -hmm. the, that number of people that would we could have in the app in the after afternoon early evenings in the summer something that we mm -hmm. could do to open up a, as well um mm -hmm. as a fundraiser um that would be something that we could control and yet um wouldn't have too much of a mess type of thing and we could do reservations and people could enjoy mm -hmm. the garden that way that would be another way that we could open up the house those are just some suggestions but i do know that if we don't talk about it and we don't put it on the calendar we don't it doesn't get on the agenda it won't happen so um, I, what i'd like to do is i'd like to put a like a fundraiser discussion on the agenda for next month or the month after a um, mm -hmm. cu couple of things with with covid um, i don't want to do a lot of work and plan a fundraiser and then have it potentially canceled yeah. Um, th that's one concern I have. And the other one is at the moment, because we don't have any idea about when the work is going to be done on the outside of the house um, mm -hmm. with the grant, right. I would be really reluctant to schedule something until we have a better insight into what we're, what we're actually going to be doing and when. Okay. Um, Cause I, I think we're going to be at the mercy of the contractors once that process starts. Yes, we are. So would you say maybe that board member um, fundraising events should be put on the calendar for March or April for uh, discussion just to, because by that time we'll have more of an idea of um, timeline of work that's going to be done, yeah. grant work that's going to be done. So yeah, so I think that's that a good in, idea. In the, so we can put that in the future agenda items and um, tickle it for, um, when would you say, March or April or May? I, I'd say April because, honestly, until we get the RFP process done and have some insight into when the contractors are available, we're not going to know. 
um, when we can actually do anything. And the other thing is we need to protect our revenue events first before we worry about doing fundraising. Okay. Um, so April? April, put, yeah, put it in future agenda items, but tickle it out to the side of marking it as an April thing. Yeah, I'm gonna put April or May and just see where we're at on the, the, um, the grant stuff. So, so basically it looks like, I mean, if we push it out that far to April or May, that means to me that we won't have any events at least this year, because if we're pushing- We could do something in the fall. Okay. Yeah, we could, or we could do teas in November and December or something like that. Okay. Um, I, I don't think it, pre, I think it precludes us from doing something in the summer. Yeah. Except maybe, yeah. We, I mean, if we started in April, we could do something in August. It, it'll be pushed, but we, we could do it. Um, yeah. That's just one of those things that I, I do know that if we are going to put an event together, we'd want to make sure that we hit that um, printing of the um, summer um, brochure. Recreation guide. Yeah, I just, I just made a note to look at the brochure schedule. I've got it. Okay. All right. Um, I wanted to add one thing on that. I kind of agree with Maureen on that putting it out till May um, is maybe April, because if we do come up with a great idea, trying to put everything together, and by April, you should know the weddings that are scheduled for the summer, so we know what we have to work around. And um, um, maybe, maybe not. Just, I, yeah, we, they, we usually book till sometime in May for 2022. Right. So, and the other thing is I think we should keep um, planted for the warmer time of the year, because if we do plan it for an outside event, even if we have to rent a, a you know, the little tent or whatever they have, um, mm -hmm. it would let, be less impacted by COVID because outside events usually aren't affected as inside events. That's exactly my thoughts too. And um, if it's out outdoors and more like um, spacing that, that we're enjoying the gardens and that type of thing, it, it is hopefully less on, um, how do I put this? Um, we can be a little more um, picky on, on like catering and things like that. We're bringing in more money, money in the sense of with less, hopefully um, less required as a tea is very, um, is great idea. And I think it's a great fundraiser, but it's very work intensive. So, um, labor intensive. Um, that's, that's one of those things. Um, just, just putting it out there. If, if we could even tweak it to March, I, I, I think that would be a better idea to, to push it clear out is even Let's if do April, yeah. I, I honestly don't think we're going to have enough information in March to make plans. Okay. All right. So um, I'll, I'll move it to April. Um, and and honestly, um, something to think about is scope, you know, because a, a T is a lot easier to do because it would be a, a lot smaller scope. So, um, and, and if we decided to do alcohol, there's a whole nother component. Yeah, there's of a whole nother component. permits, and I, I, I'm I not agree. sure we want to go there. Yeah. So, just um, think yeah. about that, and let's let's just table it to to April. All right. Um, so we'll put it on um, future agenda items to be discussed in the April calendar. Is there anything else um, for future agenda items that would like to be brought up at this point? Okay. All right, ladies, it's, as always, it's good to see your lovely faces. I wish we could be seeing each other in person. Um, look forward to seeing you on the 18th at, um, for those that are doing that meeting at two. So, all right, um, and hopefully I'll be there. Hopefully the test will be negative. So, all right. Thanks, yeah. good luck. We'll, uh, we'll adjourn. All right.